Welcome back to The Independent. As we welcome back our panelists, Deneen Borelli and Rich Benjamin. The statistics are staggering. One study found that blacks are jailed 10 times more often than whites for drug crimes. And according to the ACLU, blacks are 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for pot. Don't even get me started on crack sentencing. How could you claim our drug policy in this country is anything but racially motivated? Matt Welch. I can't, and I won't. Camille might disagree <laughs> with this. Uh, no, I think this is a case of, again, canary in the coal mine. The fact that this is disproportionate. What do you mean by that, by the way? I mean that when you have something that is so disproportionately affecting a group of people in a negative way, in this case, black people, it's also poor people, I think, in general, um, that is a sign that the tools of power, in this case, the cops, are using whatever available tower, power to go after disfavored minorities, however defined. So that's a signal to us, a canary in the coal mine, if you will, that this policy at heart is bad. We've given too much power for too little reason on... Uh, an and these are modern standard. statistics. I mean, we know that cocaine, marijuana, opium, they all have their prohibitionist roots in racism. And, and you can go back sure. to newspaper but articles the Harrison from the time. Narcotics Act was, was in fact adapt, adopted so that they could pursue uh, uh, Asians who were using opium, for yes. example. That is, that is a bad thing. That is racist. I do not, I don't like drug laws. You, you and I both agree on that. I don't think that the drug laws are in fact racially motivated. I think it is a mistake to look you mean at modern, racial the, the disparities. modern application of drug yeah, laws or I think, drug prohibition? I, well, the application of drug laws as well. I think it is a mistake to look at uh, uh, racial disparities as a bellwether. I, I do, I think it's a How big mistake not? to pull out the highlighter every time you see these things because balkanizing policy by racializing all of it doesn't make it easier to change those policies. Stop and frisk is a phenomenal example. Stop and frisk is not bad because black people are more likely to be stopped and frisked. It is bad because the police are invested with an arbitrary authority to harass well, innocent American citizens. Again, not that is the fundamental exclusive. challenge. They can, they can it's both not, be bad. But the question becomes, what will you rally around? Will but you rally York around City, abuses of power? Of people who are stopped and frisked again, are Latino or will black. Will you rally around abuses of power, or will you rally around this this racial this right, racial uh, archetype? Okay, Rich, I, I, I can I can see you. Uh... I agree with you, Kennedy. We should rally around both reasons. I think it's stop and frisk is bad for but both we, reasons. We didn't do the other thing. Now, we whether did one, and and that's the problem. Whether it's the reason you're speaking about. Or you're speaking about in terms of the arbitrary police power, it should be reevaluated. So I agree, it's not mutually exclusive. And what Matt's pointing out is also different the canary in the coal mine difference. And it's not just that more blacks are in prison, that's not so much the point. It's who is arrested and who is prosecuted. How and the where law is, is the applied. Present? Like, why exactly. is that happening? Exactly. Why do you think it's happening? Well, I don't. I don't think it's a race issue in terms of the number of arrests that are happening in urban communities because of drugs. I think it's because of the uh, number of police presence that is in that community, and that's and that's why that's happening. And also, I'm sure it's not just uh, all white police officers. So I can't really see this. I don't think it is either. I mean, I live in race, I live in LA, issue. and the LAPD right. is uh, it's very multicultural. Yeah. But that's yeah. new. Let's let's acknowledge that. Twenty years ago, that wasn't necessarily the case. I grew up with the sure. case of a of a uh, popular football running back at Long Beach State. Innocent kid basically hauled into jail, beaten to death, and then uh, staged a hanging. Guy named Ron Settles. I mean, this was this this was the the way the Signal Hill and the Long Beach Police Department and, and acted in the early 1980s. Yeah, so I mean, no, Southern California still has its problems with law enforcement. That's not what I'm right. saying. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's not as though if you see an LAPD cruiser, it's going to be. You know, it's a couple, not, like it not, not going to be John and John. There's a yeah. few But I think with these communities, if better <laughs> emphasis was placed on quality education, a better school system, cool, the school choice, for example, and, and job uh, economic uh, uh, opportunities, that they wouldn't, we wouldn't really have such a huge onslaught of crime that is happening in these communities because you'd be pr providing opportunities for these individuals and a good education. Do you think it's I think useful, the, I mean, to Camille's point, do you think it's useful to even think about uh, it, in terms of race and stop and frisk and, and criminality? Is it useful even to measure it and comment on those But I think it, it all goes back to economics, opportunities, education, and that way these individuals would not be in that kind of position to be in that kind of situation. If they had better opportunities, Opportunities, you make better decisions, better choices, and you have jobs. You so, what, have what do you think, Rich? I mean, if, if you think that there was better school choice for for parents who had kids of every age, and there were more economic opportunities, private enterprise, I'm assuming that's what you mean. Do you agree that uh, the situation might reverse itself in time? I don't agree with school choice. I think that's just become a conservative buzzword. But I do agree quality that education. quality education matters. 
Okay, people define that differently. That's definitely, I agree with opportunity. That's a good thing. I agree with jobs, and we would have different outcomes. So I agree with the spirit of what's being said. I don't agree with the details. All right, very good. Well, thank you both for, uh, you. for being here and for having great discussion. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are talking about race, and we're really going to go there next when we discuss the N-word. Narcissism. I love me. Stay here. Don't leave.